Okay guys, now first of all, what is a bath bomb? Before we even start making these, I'm gonna show you what one is. They can be called uh, shower fizzies, bath bombs, I think there's a lot of different names. And I'm gonna show you a lot of different molds we can use, but I'm gonna use these two small ones just to give you an idea. So this one is a peppermint uh, essential oil one, and it's got flakes of peppermint in it. That's what those little kind of greenish black things are. So I'm gonna show you what happens when you add a bath bomb that we are going to make today to water. So you can see it starts fizzing and bubbling. Look at that. It's disintegrating in there and fizzing and bubbling. And what it will do is it'll keep doing that and it'll do that until it completely dissolves. Now all those black specks floating on top are merely the peppermint flakes that I had put in that one. Now let's show you with a round. This is a small round bath bomb. A lot of people use these in their foot soaks. So it's the same concept. Let's put that in. This one's already dissolved. So let's put that one in and see it happens the same kind of thing happens. The ones that we're gonna make today are big and they're meant for the bath, but they're the same concept. So it doesn't hurt at all, even to touch it when it's bubbling and fizzing and everything like that. It's perfectly fine. It's actually quite cool to the touch. They are extremely soothing and relaxing and they disintegrate to nothing. Hey guys, welcome to Simple Hobby Homesteading. I'm Jenna again, and we just saw what bath bombs do, how they work, so let's actually make them. The recipe is really, really simple, and you can get everything you need from the grocery store, which is wonderful. So the basic recipe is two parts baking soda, one part citric acid, one part cornstarch, a carrier oil, like sweet almond oil, vitamin E oil, avocado. Today we're going to use sweet almond oil. It's my favorite to use in bath bombs because it provides a breathable layer on your skin. Keeps all that moisture in really, really nice, but also allows for your skin to breathe. So, which is, I mean, it's the biggest organ on the body. We need that, right? So we've got uh, the carrier oil, also three tablespoons of Epsom salts if you're doing one cup of baking soda. So. And I also add a bit of goat's milk, uh, dried goat's milk to our recipe for our bath bombs. And then also you need a little bit of water. So let's go ahead and start. Let's make some bath bombs. Uh, we have different molds. The recipe we're going to use today calls for one cup baking soda, half a cup citric acid, and a half a, half a cup of cornstarch. And it's going to make molds this size. You can see this mold. It's going to make two and a half of these. So two of these. And then, uh, depending on how, how tight I fill these, sometimes I can get a smaller one like this, and then sometimes I can only get a little foot size one like this, like for a foot bath. So, these molds are made for bath bombs, and I got these at Wholesale Supplies Plus, which is really handy, but it is the Christmas season right now, if you're watching this when it came out. Um, I should say it's October, but things are, Christmas things are in the store. And these are actually, these ones here are actually the ornaments that you can find in the Christmas section. And they simply come apart and they make perfect molds for bath bombs. So if you don't want to order from Wholesale Supplies Plus or Amazon or wherever you order your stuff from, then you can just run, run down to your hobby store and grab those ornaments. All right, so let's go ahead and make a batch. So first, let's get our baking soda. Let's get our measuring cup out first. And the nice thing about bath bombs is the measurements, really, they don't have to be perfect. So we're going to get our baking soda first. Now, this is just regular baking soda. I buy it in bulk, and so that's why it's in this kind of bag. But uh, you, this is the same kind that comes in that little orange box at the store, and so you can go ahead and get that. So we're going to put a, a full cup. And we've got, this is a half a cup measuring cup, so I need two of those. So we've got a, there we go, just shake it a little bit to even it off. There we go, so we've got one cup of baking soda. Next we need citric acid. Now you can find citric acid in the store in your canning section. It'll look like this. That's what it looks like if you get the ball brand citric acid. It's going to be much cheaper if you buy it in bulk and you go through quite a bit of it if you're going to make bath bombs for Christmas or for gifts or for yourself. And so I suggest that you do go ahead and go bulk with that. So we need a half a cup of citric acid. And even though it has acid in the name, it's perfectly safe when used in proper amounts. 
There we go, citric acid, and then cornstarch. Once again, cornstarch is in your store in every aisle of the baking aisle. And it comes in a box or it comes in a can, whatever you wanna do with it. Half a cup of cornstarch, there we go, right about that. Now what I like to do before I add my liquids is, oh, goat's milk, almost forgot that. We put in for this recipe, I always put in a teaspoon of this dried goat's milk. And this is the only recipe at, at Simple Hobby Home saying that we use store-bought uh, goat's milk. Other than that, we milk our own goats for that milk. So I like to take my dry ingredients and just kind of mix them up with a whisk gently. Now, do not have your head right over this bowl. Kind of push it back a little bit when you're mixing it up. That citric acid uh, tends to be a little harsh on the lungs, so we don't want to breathe that in a whole lot when we're mixing it. If I hold it like this, just a little bit far away, I don't have any issues at all. But it's safe, it's completely safe. So we mixed up, kind of like making a cake, we mixed up those dry ingredients, and now we're gonna go ahead and add our liquid ingredients. All right, so first, partial liquid. Well, I guess it's not really liquid. Epsom salts, once again, Go ahead and, I don't think you can buy these anything other than bulk. Uh, so go ahead and grab your Epsom salts from the store. And we put in three tablespoons of Epsom salts. Now if you wanna use the um, bath soak Epsom salts that already have uh, essential oils in them, just watch out for those. A lot of times they have a high water content and they'll kind of throw off uh, the water content in your bath bombs. So we need about three tablespoons of Epsom salts, which is wonderful. There, looky there. And I do usually mix up that just a little bit. Not a ton, there we go. Now, sweet almond oil. In the store, a bottle like this would be at least 15 or $20. I get these from Wholesale Supplies Plus, once again, WholesaleSuppliesPlus.com. And it's much, much cheaper. A lot of times I get it in the five gallon jugs, but uh, I do get a couple of these because they're a little bit easier to pour. We only need two, taste, uh, two teaspoons of sweet almond oil. So we're gonna do, there's one, and a little bit dripped over, but that's fine. So there, we're just gonna stir, and be careful when you stir, because this is a powder and it will go all over if you let it. So just stir gently. There we go. We have one teaspoon of sweet almond oil. Now we need one more teaspoon, because we need two total. Look at that. Two, two teaspoons of sweet almond oil, and we're stirring very nicely. And just watch out, your hands are gonna be a little dusty, so if you're wearing black pants, uh, and you, I don't know, put your hands on your pants, you're gonna have white handprints no matter where you put your hands on your pants. So just think about that. All right, so there we go. We're just gonna mix that up a bit. Now the last thing I'm gonna add as far as the basic recipe goes is this water. Now as soon as you add water to this, it's gonna start bubbling and fizzing. Remember at the beginning when we put those bath bombs in the water and they started bubbling and fizzing? Well, when you add the water, it's gonna start doing that. So we wanna add the water very gently and slowly. So it can be any kind of water, it doesn't have to be distilled or bottled water, or whatever. I just find it's easier to pour out of a bottle. So you're only gonna add about one teaspoon of water. So I get my teaspoon, I let just a little dribble in, Yep, there we go, and you can see there's just a little, well you probably can't see, but there's just a little bit of fizzy fizzy, and that's okay, just keep stirring, just keep stirring, like Dory, just keep swimming, just keep stirring, and you do, just keep stirring until you get all that water in. There, it took me that long to get one little teaspoon of water in, and that's exactly the what we're looking for in that. So, we're going to give it a good stir, and then we're going to test it, we're going to see if it's ready to uh, be put into the molds. Well, actually, we're gonna add the essential oils first. I'm sorry about that. So, the way you figure out if it's ready to uh, go into the molds after we add the essential oils, but we can do this step before so that we don't get essential oil all over our hands and walk around our house smelling lovely. I guess you could if you want, but it tends to be a little overwhelming if you're making lots of bath bombs. So we take a handful and we just see if it clumps together in our hands. So we take a handful and it's slightly clumped together. You see that? Slightly clumped together. 
that means that it's perfect. If it stayed just complete powder, see how it's slightly clumped together? If it stayed just complete powder, you'd want to add just a tiny bit more water. I'm talking like an eighth of a teaspoon at a time, just tiny, tiny bit. And if it clumps too strong and there's no powder, see how it clumped, but there's still a little bit of powder in my hand, that's, uh, that's perfect. If it clumped too much and there was no powder, you added too much water and what you want to do is just kind of let it sit for just a little bit or add just a tiny bit more in proper amounts, two parts baking soda, one part cornstarch, one part citric acid, just in tiny amounts because you just need more of the powder in there. So we've got all of our basic ingredients. That's You can make a bath bomb out of that right there and it would be awesome because it has the sweet almond oil, it has the Epsom salt in it, that's wonderful. But we're going to take it up a notch and we're going to add some essential oils and some botanicals. And so we're making lavender bath bombs today. So I have lavender essential oil and I also have some lavender buds. Now the only thing I don't like about lavender bath bombs is the buds tend to look like uh, mouse turds. They just do, I don't know, in the bath. They just remind me of mouse turds. And so if you wanna go ahead and grind these up in a coffee maker, uh, not a coffee maker, a coffee grinder, you're welcome to. And so you don't have what looks like mouse turds, but they're pretty, so it, it doesn't really matter all that much. So we're gonna use the Wholesale Supplies Plus um, molds just cause they're great. We're gonna add a few of the botanicals to the general recipe see just about this much not a ton I would say that's about a little less than a tablespoon and I could use my whisk or my hands or whatever all right so then we're gonna add a little essential oil now with the essential oils you don't want to add a ton if you add a ton it will be overwhelming in the bath and certain uh, certain essential oils or essential oil blends can burn the skin if you add too much and so you need to kind of be careful with that, like the uh, peppermint, eucalyptus, anything with menthol. If you add too much, you can definitely cause some skin irritation and even chemical burns. So we're going to add about, you want to add about 10 or 15 drops. With lavender, it's a very, uh, very calming one and a very safe essential oil. And so sometimes I add a little bit more. Sometimes I go up to about 20 drops of lavender. It's a nice one to do. This is probably the the favorite bath bomb of folks. People love lavender. So there we go. We added all of those. Beautifully done. All right, folks. Now, oops, that's not the right cap for that. There we go. Now, we are going to start filling our molds. So I'm going to stir this essential oil in there really well. See a little bit of clumps, but that's okay. The clumps are fine. It's not a big deal. So, oh, I can smell that lavender already, it's strong. All right, so let's get our bath bombs. Now, I like to put a few little, just so I have an idea of once they're sitting, because um, they have to sit out for 24 hours, I get lost on which one is which if they all look the same. So I like to add a little of whatever botanical I'm using. If I do peppermint bath bombs, I'll put a little peppermint uh, leaf at the bottom. So this is gonna be the top, I'm adding some little lavender buds, and that's going to be the top and the bottom, respectively, of the bath bomb. So I put some of the bath bomb concoction in here. You can see I'm just putting it in there, and I gently push down. I'm not a ton. Gently push down, right? And then I'm going to add a little bit more so it's mounding, so it's like a mound, like a mountain on top. And I just gently wipe around there so there's not a ton on the edge. All right, and I'm gonna put it right there for now. Just set that one half aside. And I already put the botanicals in the bottom. I don't know if you can see it there. There's botanicals in the bottom. Little, few little lavender buds, little mouse turds. All right, and I'm gonna do the same thing with this other half. I'm gonna put it in until it, it fills up. I'm gonna gently, with my hand, pat it down, or press it down, I should say. And then I'm gonna mound it on top. I'm gonna mound it on top, just like that. And then just like I did with that other one, just kind of go around with my finger and just get kind of the excess around the ring. I don't want to go into the actual bath bomb part too much there. So now it's time to put them together. And this is always kind of a fun little experiment <laughs> to try to get them together fast enough so that they don't all crumple. But I just bring them together like this. And that's why these molds are nice. They've got a ring to kind of give you a grip. But I just bring them together. And then you can see, I just push them together. Now be careful when you push these together because this plastic is a little thin and it will dent. But I gently push them together and get all that excess, okay? And then I can take a top off and I'm just gonna kinda get some of this excess because we're gonna keep using this powder to make more bath bombs. So we wanna try to get all that extra stuff out so we can use it in the future bath bombs that we're making. 
so I get that excess around the edges. There we go, see? And then I'm gonna put it back on. There we go, and it fits just on there perfectly. Look at that. And even if you do dent it a little bit because you push too hard on the actual mold, that's perfectly fine. It just looks like a, like a moon crater. So I'm just gonna do it one more time here, get some of this excess off. And lines up beautifully. There we go. And you can see the bottom of our bath bomb has got the botanicals there. And the top of our bath bomb has botanicals. Now I'm just gonna set this aside. One handy thing is a cup. I'm just gonna set this one aside, just like that. And we're gonna go on and make another one. So let's make another one right here. Let's put some botanicals on the bottom. All right, and we're gonna fill it. Just fill it to the top there, fill it to the top. Press it down gently. Press it down with my whole hand gently. And then we're just gonna fill it up. So it's gently mounding in the middle. Gently mounting in the middle. I'm just getting all that excess around the edges off. And there's the other half to it. Let's put some botanicals in the bottom there. There we go, a few little more. And we're gonna put some more in. Just like that, fill it to the top, fill it to the top, and then gently press it down. Now, what happens if you press it down too much? If you pack these too full, they'll expand. They do expand a bit, and they're going to end up expanding, and they're almost impossible to get out of the mold. Um, and so we don't want to fill these too much. We want them just to very nicely pack together, but we don't want to have them crazy full. So that's why we don't want to press down super duper hard or keep pressing down. We only do that once. So now we're going to put the two halves together quickly. Oh, looky there. Put them together quickly. There we go. And I'm going to lift the top off and I'm just going to get that edge off just like I did with the other one. Very well done. There we go. And we're just going to put it back on and kind of this is a couple step process. There we go. Gently squish it together, push it together, lines up nicely. There we go, one more time around the edge here. Nice, well done. Okay, oops. All right, one more time. And we're just gonna set that there. You can set it on the counter. Sometimes they roll away, so that's why I don't always like to set them on the counter. We're gonna make a little foot one. See, look at that. We can always change things if we want, right? So let's make a foot one. Same thing, fill it up and then press it down. There we go. And then we're gonna mound it just like we did the other one. Set that one there. Let's put this one in. Oh, we need the botanicals in there. Let's put this one in. Fill it to the top. Press it down. This one's always a little harder to press down because it's smaller. There we go. We might have a little extra. Maybe I'll use that in a bath for me today. A little extra powder left over. You can just put in a Ziploc bag and use that for your next bath. So that always works nice. All right, so we've got that. So now we're going to fit these two halves together just like we did the other one. Look at that little one. There we go. Same concept with the other one, too. We're just going to get that off the edge. There we go. Get that off the edge that back in oh and I did make a little dent in this one I pushed too hard so I'm just gonna put a little bit more right there fill in that dent and then looky there I can just put the the top back on and we've got it going there we go and this one I did fill a little full which is fine just gonna be a big little bath bomb a big little one and it's gonna be a pain in the butt to get out of the mold but that's all right too There we go. So we put those together. Those two halves have come together nicely. Now this one, we've got some powder left. What you can do is just fill a half if you want like an actual mold mold or just put it in a Ziploc bag if you want to and use it in your next bath, bath as a loose powder. It really makes no difference. All right, now with these bath bombs, they sit with both halves together so just as this just as this with both of them on there it sits like that for an hour okay 
So after an hour, then, and I like to put mine in the basement by the dehumidifier. It's nice and dry down there. Because what you're trying to do is get that moisture out of the bath bomb um, that held it together. And once that moisture leaves, it's just going to keep it all held together because it's got that form. And so we're going to leave it for an hour like this. And then after an hour, what you're going to do is you're going to take the top off. And you're going to leave it for another hour, right? Now, you do have a couple options for letting your bath bombs harden for 24 hours. After they have sat for an hour with both lids on, um, you take that one lid off, just like that, and then you leave that sit for an hour. And then at that point, what I really love to do, and it has become so dang handy, is grabbing one of these Christmas ornament boxes. I got mine after Christmas last year for, I think it was $3.50, what does that say? Yeah, I think $3.50. And these are perfect for bath bombs because while they're hardening, it lets them keep their round figure. So after they've been sitting for their hour with the one lid off, then it's time to let them sit for 24 hours without any lid on. And that really allows all of the moisture to evaporate out of all parts of the bath bomb. So you take your bath bomb in the one mold. See, it's got the mold on the bottom still. You put another mold on top and then you flip it over, and what we're just trying to do is loosen it from that bottom mold. And so you just give it a couple little taps and gently see, oh, it lifted up, all right? So we know that it came out of that mold that it had been sitting in for the last two hours. So I just kind of gently go like this, back and forth, so now I can. So now I can take it out, and I can put it right in this spot. And if you're doing that and it's becoming kind of fragile, Leave it in that bottom half of that mold for a couple more hours. And you can even leave it in the bottom half of that mold for a full 24 hours if you want. And then unmold it after that if you're worried that it's going to crumple. And if it does crumple, fill it in a cute little cone-shaped bag and just mark it bath powder instead of bath bomb, right? So we're going to let it sit in this. And they're rounded. And so they keep, if you put it on a flat surface, it'll flatten a lot of times in that 24-hour um, time. And so if you put it in this rounded thing, it's really, really nice and it doesn't flatten. Another option is these foamy, you know, putting it right on there. Let's see if we can get it out there. Putting it right on there, that allows for it not to flatten on the bottom, which is nice as well. Just be very gentle with those because they're still, um, you know, able to, to kind of disintegrate in your hands if you're not careful. So those are good to go. And after 24 hours, then I'm going to show you how we can bag these up. Now fast forward 24 hours and they've sat uh, and they are ready to be packaged. And they do need to be packaged in a somewhat airtight container because otherwise they'll just attract moisture and they'll just kind of disintegrate in, into a uh, powder. And so when you have your bath bomb, if you want, you can see how it's kind of got that, you can see where that uh, the two halves came together. If you want, you can gently smooth that down with your finger so that's almost seamless. But I mean, honestly, it's not a big deal that they know that you put two halves together. That's okay. So I like to use these bags. They're treat bags. You can grab them at any craft store, at any Walmart or whatever. And they're so handy for this because you can just open them up. And you can kind of get as decorative as you want with them, which is kind of nice. But we, went, we go ahead and we put in our bath bomb there. And let me see which one this was. This was a Breathe Easy blend. So I twist, I twist this, and it comes with, those treat bags often come with these little ties, but I like to use a little bit of raffia instead. And so I'm going to tie this tight here. We're going to tie this on and make it just absolutely kind of old school adorable. So I do one knot, and then you can make these little tags. You can either buy the tags um, that are already out, that are already cut out and have a little hole in them like this one. Or I've got a whole, uh, a big puncher. Um, I don't know what it's called. But I just take cardstock and it punches like a tag like that, which is kind of cute. And then I just put, they've got a ton of different kinds. I just put a quick little hole in it. And then I just tie that in with the raffia on the bag. And it is ready to be either stored, and I recommend not storing these in the bathroom because that's where a lot of moisture hangs out. So um, if you do like in the cupboard or something would be the best spot. But in a closet is good or, uh, you know, anywhere decorative if you want to just put a basket of them somewhere. I'm not tying very well today. If you want to just put a basket of them somewhere, that's cute too. Maybe on a little table right outside the bathroom or something. I don't know, just watch that you don't put it somewhere where there's a lot of moisture unless they're really sealed well in a bag. 
All right, so I'm just gonna trim this up a little bit. And I like to trim off the top so there's not so much uh, plastic there. And so you've got a bath bomb that is ready either to give as a gift or just to hang out in your home until you're ready to use it, which is so nice. And now with these bath bombs, you can add so much different stuff. The goat's milk is not necessary to add. You don't have to add that. Do not add liquid goat's milk. Um, you will have mold issues with that. And so that's not a good idea. Um, now you can add peppermint, uh, peppermint leaves if you want, or you can just grab a bag of peppermint. Mm and really just enjoy that smell because it's so nice. Um, or some eucalyptus leaves, which are really, really nice. Now I do a blend also. This is uh, eucalyptus leaves, oats, um, and colloidal oatmeal is, is a really fancy name for just ground oats, just plain oats, just ground to a fine powder. And that's all that is. So I do that chamomile and some goat's milk powder in here. And that's a really nice blend. I don't even add any essential oils to this bath bomb when I add this blend in there because it's like steeping yourself in a bath of tea and it's so good for your skin and it smells incredible without any essential oils. So that's always nice. You can use bath bombs with no essential oils and just herbs herbs if you want and it's it's just so incredible so nice so I hope you guys had a blast learning how to make bath bombs and see that they are so easy and actually quite inexpensive to make at home and you're probably gonna think twice when you head to those doors and you see a bath bomb for five dollars and you're like I can make that for 50 cents at home and you do they're great Christmas presents you can start making them now and they'll keep till Christmas which is so nice and if you open one up and you notice that it's lost a lot of its fragrance a lot of that essential oil is gone let's say it's a year old and it's lost a lot of that fragrance just take an eyedropper and just drop a couple drops of uh, essential oil on that bath bomb before you put it in the bathtub and it has rejuvenated itself so it's so nice and they'll last forever so you guys have a great day and we'll talk to you later bye bye